a rise in your body temperature is unusually or rather usually something to worry about. In fact, an elevated body temperature could be a sign of a serious infection similar to which a rise in global temperatures should worry humanity as this will interfere with the balance that enables organisms on this planet, including you and I, to function properly. Well, next month, the world's attention will, for at least two weeks, be drawn to Cairo, Egypt, for the 27th United Nations Climate Change Conference, dubbed African Climate Change. Well, key concerns include the severe drought experienced across the Horn of Africa, amongst other climatic phenomena. However, another unexplored effect of climate change is its effects on Kenya's tourist attractions. In our special feature tonight, The Climate Rage, our reporter Agnes Olo explored the effects of climate change in the coast region and now brings us the story. had been noticed. The sea has eaten into the town. is recognized globally as one of the continent's finest tourist destinations. From the Big Five animals to the majestic coastline on the Indian Ocean, the dramatic Great Rift Valley to world-renowned historical heritage sites, unfortunately, none of them has been spared of the effects of climate change. Mombasa County, the economic hub of the coastal region, Today, it appears to be business as usual. But a closer look reveals how climate change is affecting this coastal jewel. Our first destination is the over 400-year-old tourist attraction, Fort Jesus. When viewed from the air, it seems to take the shape of a man. The fort, which took three years to complete, was built to secure the safety of Portuguese nationals living on the east coast of Africa when it was captured by the Omanis, who used it as barracks, and later captured by the British, who used it as a prison before it was declared a national park in 1958. Fort Jesus was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO and highlighted as one of the most outstanding and well-preserved examples of the 16th century Portuguese military fortifications. But this heritage is at stake due to climate change. It is in Mombasa Old Town, also known as Mjiwakale, where we meet 67-year-old Hassan Mohammed Hassan. The father of four was an educator at the Fort Jesus Museum. Hassan retired from the National Museum of Kenya in 2018. For him, his family and hundreds of others, the fort provided them with an income for many years. But Hassan is now worried about losing the fort to the rising sea levels. He heeds our call to meet up at the fort, 12 years since he retired. Today he is elated to be back, however, on a different mission, to tell a different story. 
a story of destruction and disaster in waiting should humanity not change its ways. Bahari lazima iweze kuongezeka kwa sababu ikiwa hali ya hewa na hali ambayo juu ya mawingu yameathiriwa kikubwa sivyo vile ambavyo yako ni mazito lazima maji yapandishe sehemu ambazo zina barafu nyingi hivi sasa barafu zile zina mwaya maji na zikile zikitoa maji na maji yale yakimbia yajaingia kwenye bahari na bahari ya panda rainfall coming in in huge volumes through the site also weakens the physical fabric of the site so rainfall from the top erosion from the bottom our sites at are at a major risk right now from climate change. Less than 100 kilometers away lies the resort town of Malindi in Kilifi County. Here we find another historic structure, the iconic Vasco da Gama pillar. It was significant as it was used to direct navigators and sailors and could be seen from the high seas. The Vasco da Gama pillar, which has survived over 500 years of existence, is on the verge of being submerged by the sea. Malindi town itself, where originally it was during the time of the Portuguese, it was not where it is today. No, part of it has been taken by the sea. The currents are also the ones that actually determine the productivities of the seas. And uh, in our region, uh, the main currents that actually uh, uh, causes productivity are driven by winds, monsoon winds. We arrive at the Vasco da Gama Pillar environs on a weekend at 10 a.m. to observe the ocean's behavior. Four hours later, at 3 p.m., the sea basin is occupied. A few meters from the Vasco da Gama pillar is the famous Malindi jetty. It is a favorite to many locals and tourists and believed to have been designed to help in offloading of goods from the ships. But now the load of humanity uses it for a fascinating view of the ocean. The structure too has no future. Still in Kilifi County, Dumba ruins an ancient stone town set amid shady trees which archaeologists say have grown over time. The mosque at the beach or the Grand Mosque has a big problem because its uh, foundation is being eroded. Uh, in future, therefore, we are likely to lose such a uh, historic uh, structure. How many yakija? The future is bleak. Who undertook the study and confirmed that there is uh, impact of sea erosion from uh, climate change and that the, the structure of for Jesus is at risk. Cracks had been noticed at that point in time. Now, using that report, we were able to send that to the government and uh, I must say we were lucky that we were heard and uh, we managed to receive funds to undertake the seawall. The seawall project uh, cost, cost a big money, um, almost, I mean, over, 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 over a billion shillings uh, for the wall itself and also the backfilling. For heritage, you don't look at how much money you've spent and, 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 and when and how you're going to recoup that money because uh, it's our mandate as, as, as an institution and also as, as a country to take care of our heritage, whether or not it gives us money back. Now, with the climate change, every country is trying to see the best way to protect their, their, their heritage. So we'll try to adopt um, methodologies that can mitigate against the destruction of these sites. Uh, it's, a, it's an effort that, that will require the support of different stakeholders uh, because, you know, you know the government, um, I mean, there are many other, many other issues and, and, and challenges that the government will be addressing. It's not just heritage alone. Yeah, so this calls for uh, a concerted effort between the government, 
the National Museum of Kenya and different stakeholders. During the 26th Conference of Parties on Climate Change held in Glasgow, Scotland, last year it was agreed that the world needed to reach zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. And to be on track for this, global emissions needed to have been halved by 2030. While the promise made at COP26 still remains a promise, every passing minute is important as some countries work round the clock to put in place special adaptation measures, given that climate change effects will be the new normal if the necessary interventions are not implemented quickly. Uh, the whole question of uh, adaptation. Uh, in Glasgow, of course, it was agreed we need to have um, the global goal on adaptation. And it was agreed that we'll have uh, discussions around this in uh, SB 56 in, um, that happened in Bonn uh, in June this year. You know, uh, there were discussions around the global goal on adaptation and how do we frame that global goal on adaptation, which is key. The impacts are with us and therefore we have to really cushion ourselves against the experiences uh, or the, worst, uh, the adverse experiences uh, we are realizing from, uh, from, from climate change. The other one is on finance. As Africa prepares to host the 27th United Nations Conference of Parties on Climate Change, the continent will be pushing for recognition of Africa as a continent on the receiving end of actions caused by other nations and continents. For now, it is a wait and see strategy for the African continent, with all focus on the 27th United Nations Conference of Parties on Climate Change, where some firm decisions to arrest the runaway impact of climate change could be made.